The first thing I'm going to show you is uh, there's a permission in RoomKey that has to do with the interface. Um, if you go to System Configuration and Clerks, and then you locate the clerk that you're looking for and go to Permissions, um, over to the right-hand side box under System Configuration, we have Permission 1542, Override CC Processing. And what this permission does is it allows you to bypass the interface if you ever need to. Um, I usually suggest giving this permission to maybe managers, supervisors, maybe night audit if they're the ones who do your batching out, but you don't really want your staff bypassing the interface. You don't want to give this permission to everyone. And we'll go through um, some examples later on in the training of when you might have to bypass the interface. Okay, so uh, we will start with uh, basically just uh, the functions in room key where you'll see the interface pop up. And I'll also let you know if you've got uh, the credit card swipers that are compatible with room key, I'll let you know where you would be swiping your card. So we will start with arrivals. So when you're checking in a guest, you're going to go to the arrivals area. You're going to click on the name of the guest you're checking in, and you're going to swipe their card. When you swipe their card, it's going to prompt the check-in button to appear, the check-in box. So at this point, uh, the, the default for the interface is to authorize for full room and tax. So um, right now you can see up top here, this guest is in for two nights at $100, so my interface is going to authorize for $200 plus tax. If you uh, want to charge, um, get an authorization on top of that for any incidentals, so say you take an extra $50 per stay for incidentals, you would put that $50 in available credit. And then what it'll do is it'll authorize for full room and tax plus $50. So in this example, I'm going to put my available credit at $50. And at this point, all I do is I hit the check-in button. So once I hit the check-in button, my Shift 4 interface box pops up. So any credit card transactions you do in RoomKey, this is the box you want to see. If you don't see this box, something's wrong. Um, so you can see up here on the Shift 4 interface, your action is authorizing, and the amount is uh, 272. So for me, that's two nights room and tax plus the $50. If you swipe the guest's credit card at the time um, when you were checking them in, this card presented box will be checked. Uh, the CVV2 number, that's that three-digit number on the back of the card. Um, it's not a required field, and really, um, I'd only populate it if your processor maybe gives you an extra discount for entering that number. Otherwise, uh, it's not necessary. So when you get to this screen here, all you would have to do is hit Post down below. And what it's going to do is go to your uh, Shift 4 software that's been installed on your computer, and you'll come back with an approved message. Once you get your approval, you just hit close, and that's it. The guest is checked in. So now for this guest, if I were to go to my transactions menu up top and go to authorized transactions, I can see the authorization that I got on this guest's card. Okay, so there's my authorization for 272. Now, from the screen here, you'll see there's a Settle button and a Void button. The Settle button here, um, the only reason you might really need it is, let's say, um, this guest upon checkout, their bill is $300. And when you're trying to check them out, the card is declining. So you know you have 272 already authorized on their card. You just can't get that extra $28. So what you could do is you could come into transactions and authorize transactions, and you could choose to settle this authorization, which means it'll change the authorization into a settlement, and it'll post a payment on the guest folio for that amount. And then you try to collect the other $28, you know, cash or another credit card. The void button here, um, you would void a transaction if a guest decided to use a different credit card. Um, voiding transaction, we send a message to Shift 4 to void. It doesn't mean that the funds are going to be automatically released to the guest's credit card. It's still going to take that typical five to seven day process or however long your processor takes or the bank takes to release the funds. So um, the void button just kind of sends a notification and closes it out and lets you add a new credit card if you need to and get another authorization. 
So we'll go back to our arrivals area just to go over a few more things. Again, so we'll just review an arrival. So go to arrivals, click on the name of the guest you're checking in, and again, swipe their credit card. When you swipe their credit card, it's going to automatically bring in the check-in screen. Again, if you need available credit, you can put that amount in available credit, so additional credit on top of room and tax. Now, just some additional uh, things I want to point out on this guest check-in screen. So here's our disable online processing. So that's the, um, this checkbox is related to that permission I talked about at the very beginning. So if I were to check this box, what it's going to do is it's going to bypass the interface. So we don't really want to do that. That's why we make it a permission. But if you ever had to, if for some reason your sh the Shift 4 software was down and you needed to check in guests, you could bypass the interface to check them in. This override default credit. So the default credit in RoomKey is full room and tax. Um, if I were to check this box, what it means is I'm overriding the default. And what I'm overriding it to is whatever I put in my available credit box. So if I were to check override default credit and I only put $50 in available credit, I'm only going to get an authorization for $50. So if a guest comes to check in and they're like, oh, I've only got $200 on my credit card, can you just authorize for $200? That's when you would check override default credit, and you put $200 in here, and then that's all that will, you'll get an authorization for. Okay, so otherwise, if it's just a straight check-in at that point, you just fill in your available credit amount, hit check-in. Again, there's my Shift 4 interface. My action is authorizing. I just go ahead and hit post. I wait for my approved message to come back. Once I get an approved message, I just hit close, and the guest is checked in, and their credit card has been authorized. Now, a few more things I just want to point out about arrivals. Um, you can only authorize one card at check-in. So if there's two guests in the room, you can only authorize one card. Whatever card you're authorizing should be the card that's the main card on the guest's profile. So here we have Jillian Gregory. We have her MasterCard. Um, if she's the one that, whose card we're going to authorize, that's whose card we want to have here. The other guest in the room, what you can do is you can store their card in extra cards. And to get to extra cards, we just hit the Change Reservation button. Then we go to our Guest Info tab. And then down in the bottom right-hand corner here, we have Extra Cards. So you can hit New Card, and this is the only area in Room Key where you can't actually swipe the card, so you would actually have to pick, okay, this guest has a MasterCard, and you'd have to manually input the information. Okay, and then you just hit Save, and then the card is saved in extra cards, uh, so you can use it at checkout. So again, with the arrival, our last arrival, we just Go to Arrivals, click on the name of the guest who's checking in, swipe their card. When you swipe their card, it's going to automatically bring up the check-in screen. If we want additional uh, amounts for incidentals, we put in that amount into available credit, hit check in, get our Shift 4 interface, we just hit post, when we get our approval, we're just going to hit close, and again, the guest is checked in and their card has been authorized. Now, for walk-in reservations, um, it's a little bit different, so I just want to show you this. So when you do a walk-in reservation, you'll go ahead and follow your typical uh, procedures of, you know, client type, date, picking a rate, and a room type. And when you get to the Guest Info tab, you can swipe the card here. So when you swipe the card here, it is going to populate the credit card information down in the payment method area. So after you have the information down in the payment method area, you can go ahead and proceed to fill in the rest of the information. Uh, I'm just going to qu quickly pick a GRESS profile just to uh, make this go by a little faster. Okay, sorry. Okay, so then what I do is I just go ahead and hit OK to create the reservation. And what's going to pop up is my guest folio credit limit screen. Now, then this screen here, the credit limit that you see right here, that's going to represent full room and tax. 
So this guest is just in for the one night. If it was in for two, this would say 222. So if I want to get my uh, extra money for incidentals, my extra authorization for incidentals, I can just put that amount to the right of the plus sign here. And then what I do is I just go ahead and hit post. And you can see my shift for interface now wants to authorize for 161. So again, full room and tax plus the amount for incidentals. So I just go ahead again, hit post. I'm going to get my approval. And once I get my approval, I just hit close, and then I exit out of my guest folio credit limit screen, and the guest is checked in, and I have an authorization. So now we'll talk about um, increasing credit limits. So what if you have a guest who wants to increase their credit limit? So um, let's say, or sorry, um, they want to extend their stay. So the way the interface works is um, when you extend a guest stay, um, the interface does not automatically increase the authorization for you. You have to increase the authorization after you've extended the guest stay. So, for example, we'll take this guest right here, and they want to stay one more night. Okay, so first step of what we're going to do is we're going to extend their stay by one night. So I'm going to hit Change Stay. I'm going to go and I'm going to extend the reservation by one night. And when I hit OK, you're going to see down here in the bottom, the credit limit is now increased to reflect the extra nice room and tax. So now that my credit limit's increased, I need to increase my uh, authorization. So to increase my authorization, I go to Transactions, Guest Folio Credit Limit. So this is the same screen we saw with the walk-in. Again, my credit limit's already been increased to reflect what I need now for my authorization. So I go ahead and just hit post. You can see here the amount I'm authorizing is 272. So what it's doing is it's taking my original authorization of 162 or 161 and it's increasing it to 272 to cover that extra night room and tax. So again, at this point, I just go ahead and hit post. I wait to get my approval from Shift 4, and I just hit Close. So now, if I go to Transactions and Authorize Transactions, I see that my new authorization now is 272. Okay, so we'll do that one more time. So we'll pick a guest right here. Um, again, you could see that for this guest right now, their credit limit is 272. So I'm going to increase their stay. So I'm going to hit Change Stay. I'm going to go ahead and extend the reservation by one night. After the reservation has been extended, you're going to see down in the bottom right-hand corner that my credit limit increases to reflect the new authorization that I need to get. So I just go to Transactions, Guest Folio Credit Limit. There, again, is the credit limit. That's the new authorization I need to get. Go ahead and hit post. Brings up my shift for interface. Again, hit post. And I get my approved message. So now my authorization has been increased to reflect this new amount. Now, if you have a guest who has just, um, uh, you have your maybe $50 for incidentals and they've exceeded that amount, you can uh, get another $50 if you need to just by going to transactions, guest folio credit limit, and just putting an extra $50 or whatever amount you need to the right of the plus sign. Then what that's going to do is it's just going to increase your authorization by another $50. And that way it could cover any extra incidentals that might be on the guest card or guest folio. OK, so um, now when it comes time to checking out the guest. When you're checking out a guest, you want to make sure you use the check out button to check out your guests and don't post payment to settle and then check out. The reason you want to use the check out button is because the check out button is tied to the authorization you got at check in. 
So if you were to use post-payment, what you're doing is you're going to settle the bill for $111, but then you're still holding that original authorization you took at check-in. And that won't be released for another five to seven days, you know, depending on the bank. So you always want to use the checkout button when you're settling a guest's bill. So when we're checking out this guest, for example, we just go ahead and hit the checkout button. Um, we get our checkout screen. This guest is going to be an early checkout. Uh, there's their balance. So I just go ahead and hit the checkout button here. I'm just going to pick my reason. And then again, there's your shift for interface box. You can see the action is checkout. There's the amount that I'm settling for. Um, I'm just going to uncheck this print receipt box because I don't want a receipt to print myself, but you would just leave that checked. Uh, go ahead and hit post. I get my approved message. Again, I just go ahead and hit close, and now that guest is checked out. So if I were to go to my checked out area now and just go look at this particular guest, um, there's my MasterCard payment. And if I were to right click on this or any payment in room key, I have credit card info as a menu option. In the credit card info, it shows the credit card that was charged, the last four digits, and it shows my authorization code that I got from Shift 4 as well. So if you ever need that information. So again, we'll just go through another checkout here. So I just select the name of the guest that I'm checking out, hit the checkout button. There's my balance. There's the credit card that I'm going to be charging. Go ahead and hit checkout. My Shift 4 interface box pops up. Just hit Post, get my approval, and that's it. The guest is checked out. Now, um, if there's more than one guest in the room, that is when you would use the Post Payment button to settle the bill. So remember how we said whoever's credit card is on the main one on file here, that should be associated with the name of the guest on file. And that's the one you should be using the checkout button to settle, because that's the card you took the authorization with at check-in. So the other guest in the room, their card should be stored in extra cards. So um, you'll want to settle their half of the bill first. So for example, we have this guest again right here. Um, to settle the shares portion or the extra cards portion, we would go ahead and we would hit post payment. Now at this point, I can go select from extra cards. And if the extra card is in the additional cards, I could just select it. And it would populate the person's information. And then what I do is I just put in how much they're paying. And then I hit OK and exit. And my Shift 4 interface box is going to pop up and settle just for that amount to that extra card. Now, um, with uh, any credit card interface you get. Usually if you, can, if you swipe the card, you get a discount. So if you can swipe the guest's card instead of using Select from Extra Cards, um, I would suggest to do that. So if you're going to swipe a card in the payment screen, what you're going to do is you're going to pick the credit card type that the guest is paying with. Then you're going to put in the amount that they're paying for. And then you just go ahead and you swipe the card. And when you swipe the card, it's just going to automatically bring up the Shift 4 interface. Now I'm just going to put in some information here because I don't have a swiper. But if we had swiped the card, what would happen next is your Shift 4 interface box is going to pop up. It's going to settle. And there's the amount that it's settling for. So I just go ahead again, hit Post. It's going to go get an approval for this credit card. And then I hit Close. And then I have one half of the bill now paid, and it's to the MasterCard. So now what I can do is I can use my Checkout button to settle the remainder of the bill. So when I hit Checkout, you can see the balance now on the account is going to be $55.50. There's the American Express of the original guest. So I just go ahead and hit Checkout. Again, my Shift 4 interface box pops up. I just go ahead and hit Post. I get my approval, and that's it. The guest is successfully checked out. Now, as far as reversals and adjustments when it comes to credit cards, you can reverse and adjust at any point um, while the guest is in-house, after they've checked out, 
um, a week, a month after they've checked out. It doesn't matter. You just have to find the folio of the guest, and then you can make the appropriate adjustments. So there's two ways you can do uh, reversals or adjustments um, with the interface. So let's use an example of this guest right here called, had a complaint, you've decided to um, take $20 off their bill. So we're going to refund, our step, first step would maybe be to adjust room by $20. So I'm going to right click on my room charge, select adjustment, and I'm going to do a refund for $20. So I've, after I've refunded my charge, now I need to um, refund the guests their money. So at this point, I would just hit Post Payment, and my payment box appears, and there's the amount, that, and you can notice it has a negative in front of it. So a negative in front of a payment is a refund. So I just go ahead and hit OK. There's my Shift 4 interface again, and you can see it says it's doing a credit. Just go ahead and hit post, and there's my approved message. I just go ahead and close, and there is uh, the refund on the guest card. Now, if you have another scenario where maybe you, this guest here, they didn't stay at all, um, they got charged by accident, so you just need to refund everything. So if you're refunding an entire amount, you can just right-click on the credit card transaction and select reverse. And then you can write a reason why you're doing the reversal, hit OK, and again, your Shift 4 interface box pops up. So here again, we can see our action is refund and that we're doing a credit. So we're just going to go ahead and hit post, get our approved message from Shift 4, and then when we close out, that's it. The credit card has been refunded. And now, of course, I would go ahead and reverse my room charge or whatever charges were associated with it as well. Now, a few other things I just want to point out about room key and the way it works. Um, oh, I just hit that button by accident. OK, so um, you can see here I have a whole bunch of reservations underneath a McLean. And no matter which one I go to, the credit card on file never changes. And the reason is, is because the credit card on the account is tied to the guest profile name. So if I change the credit card on one reservation, it's going to update all past, present, and future reservations because the credit card is tied to the guest profile, not to the individual reservations. So in this situation, if I had a, res if I had a group of reservations under Nita McLean, and I come to check in, and I'm like, oh, I'm with the Nita McLean party, but I'm going to pay for my own room. Here's my credit card. Well, you want to make sure that you change the red name on the reservation to my name before you swipe my card. Because if you don't, what's going to happen is my credit card is going to go on all the Nita McLean reservations. So very important that if you have a bunch of reservations under one guest's name, that you are changing the name on the reservation to the person who's paying for the room before you actually swipe their cards. Okay, so now on to error messages with the Shift 4 interface. So, um, if you are using the Shift 4 interface and you get an error message down in this little box down here, um, those error messages down there you would call Shift 4 about. So in the same box where you get your approval. Um, some common error messages that you might come across, uh, one is unrecognized status. An unrecognized status, nine times out of ten means that the credit card number, there's something wrong with it. There's maybe a digit missing or uh, two numbers were entered incorrectly. Um, so it's usually whenever someone is manually entered in the card. So double check the card number, re-enter it, make sure it's correct, and then try to settle it again. If you still get an unrecognized status error, then you'll want to give Shift 4 a call. Um, some reasons I've seen unrecognized status when it hasn't been a credit card is, um, let's say your property, you didn't sign up to process Discover cards, and your front desk agent, a guest gave them a Discover card, and they're trying to settle the bill. Well, it might come up as unrecognized status because you don't accept Discover cards. So if you called Shift 4, they could explain why. Um, another error message that you might get is call voice center. 
Uh, call Voice Center is when you would just call your merchant to see if you could get a manual authorization. So uh, if you got that manual authorization, all you would have to do is check this box here that says Authorize Manually, and you would enter in the code that they give you. And then when you hit Post, it'll just go ahead and give you your approval. Um, another error message that you can get with the interface is if you go ahead and hit the post button and you find that the interface is taking a really long time to process and you get that little hourglass going around and then a separate box pops up and in this box it's going to say a synchronous socket error and it usually has a number associated with it and the most common number is 10060. And what 10060 is, is it's a communication error between us and Shift 4. So we communicate via an IP address, so there's something that's interrupting our communication. So if you ever get 10060, uh, first thing you should do is just reboot your computer. Nine times out of ten, that'll resolve your issue. If it doesn't, you would give us a call. And then we can help you troubleshoot why you're getting uh, the error. So for any of these error messages or really anything to do with room key at all, if you were to go to your help menu in room key and go to room key smart support, what you can do is any of these error messages you get, uh, for example, if I just type in 10060, um, there's my troubleshooting guide, shift for a synchro socket error 10060. So I just go ahead and click on this link here and it's going to tell me how I can troubleshoot that error. And step one will be reboot your computer. OK, so now, um, as far as batching out at the end of the night, you don't batch out in room key. Uh, you batch out in Shift4's dollars on the net. So um, one of the reports that you can use in room key to assist with batching out. So when you batch out in Shift4, you should be comparing your batch out in Shift4 with room key on a nightly basis so that you can find any discrepancies as soon as they happen. So if I go to um, Reports, Financial, Transaction Register Balance, um, I can start with a summary if I want, but I'm just going to go right to Detail with Guest Name. And you would run this report for the day that you're batching out. And what you're looking at here is there's my payments, all my American Express, and all my MasterCards. So what you're going to do is you're going to look at your Shift 4 dollars on the net batch out, and you're going to compare your totals, make sure everything matches. If things don't match, then you're going to be comparing line by line between the two systems to find the transaction that's causing the discrepancy. So if you have a transaction that is showing up in room key that is not in Shift 4. So how can a transaction be in room key but not in Shift 4? Well, when we set up your Shift 4 interface, we set it up on the computers where Shift 4 installed their software. If you go to a back office computer where the Shift 4 software was not installed and you post a payment, it's not going to go through the interface because that computer was not set up on the interface. So um, that's one, one reason how it can show up in room key but not in Shift 4. Um, another way is disable online processing. So um, if I'm on room key and I go to hit post payment and I check disable online processing and hit OK and exit, you're going to see that my Shift 4 interface doesn't pop up, but the transaction still posts in room key. So there's my payment, but I didn't get my Shift 4 interface, so I didn't get my approval. So that's why you don't want everyone having that disable online processing um, permission. So in this situation, what do you do? Well, you have two options. Option one, if you know the credit card number, you can just log into dollars on the net and you can manually process the card. So it's already in room key, so now you'll manually process it in shift four and the two systems will match. Um, another option is to do the following. So find the payment that was posted that did not go through the interface. First step I would do is I would right click on the payment and I go to my credit card info and I would just reconfirm that, okay, MasterCard 1111 and just make sure that that's the one I actually have on file because maybe it's the one in extra cards that didn't go through the interface. Okay, so once I confirm I have the credit card, 
I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to reverse, right click, and I'm going to reverse this MasterCard. But I want to check Disable Online Processing. The original payment did not go through the interface, so I don't want my reversal to go through the interface. So I have to make sure in this situation that I check Disable Online Processing. So I just go ahead and hit OK, and my payment gets reversed. Again, Shift 4 interface box didn't pop up, which is fine. I didn't want it to. So now what I can do is I can now hit Post Payment again, and this time I make sure my Shift 4 interface box pops up, and I make sure that I get my approval. Now, what happens if you have a transaction in Shift 4 that's not in room key? And how can that happen? Again, um, when you're posting a payment in the interface, let me just bring one up here. So as soon as I hit the Post button here, and as soon as I get my approval, that means that it is in Shift 4. So as soon as it says Approved, Shift 4 has that transaction. Now, it doesn't appear in Room Key until I hit the Close button. So what happens if I hit Post, I get my approval, I'm talking to the guest, and when I go back to hit the Close button, the power goes out, the Internet goes out, my computer crashes, I get an error, something like that. So the transaction went through to Shift 4, but it never got to Post in Room Key. So if you have a transaction that's in Shift 4, and it's not in room key, what you would do is you would locate the folio in room key that is missing the posting. You would go ahead and you would hit post payment. And again, this time you would want to check the disable online processing box. Because the original payment went through to shift 4, um, you don't want this second one. You just need this to post in room key so the systems will match. So you have to check disable online processing and then hit OK and then your payment will post just in room key, and then it's already in shift 4, so now you balance. Now another report in room key uh, that will be useful, that you can help kind of keep an eye to make sure everything's going good with your interface, that all the transactions are processing. If I go to reports, and I go to online processing, I have my credit card transaction report. So this report here, um, I can just run for today, and what I'm going to look for is any transactions that appear at the very top of my report that don't have an authorization, an invoice, or a TRAN ID. So the ones that appear at the very top here, it's possible they did not go through the interface. Um, I can tell you right now if a sale appears here, it definitely did not go through the interface. If a credit appears, um, sometimes Shift 4 doesn't um, give authorization codes for reversals. So it's very possible that these credits went through to Shift 4. So you would just want to open up your dollars on the net, and you would want to check to see, okay, did these transactions go through or didn't they? And again, if, you, if this sale was uh, in here, it's here posted in room key, but you don't have it in your Shift 4, then you use one of those two options of either A, manually processing the card in Shift 4 to get the two systems to match, or B, you can find this folio in Room Key, you can reverse this sale, but make sure you disable online processing, because the original didn't go through, you don't want the reversal to go through, and then you can repost the payment, and that will uh, process, make sure it goes through to Shift 4 this time. Okay, so that is your Shift 4 interface. Uh, if you have any questions at all, please feel free to contact us. Our support line is 1-800-234-5695 and number 3 for support, or you can email us at support at roomkeypms.com. Thank you.